proud about that. Uh, mildly embarrassing for four old blokes, oh, yeah. uh, former footballers, but uh, something else. I was just, I was just <laughs> texting my sons actually on one of those joint chats because they're all massive Barca fans saying, please, and then it happened. It was a, a magical moment. Uh, Barcelona have come back and um, for one of the most phenomenal comebacks I think that we've ever seen in any football game anywhere. Well, if you look through that squad of players, they've all achieved some great things with club and country. Uh, World Cup winners, uh, Champions League winners multiple times. But I'm sure this game will be up there with one of the best they've ever played in in terms of the feeling about turning the result around. Yeah. There's so much that went into this performance in terms of drive, determination, mentality, the fitness to press the way they did. I mean, it was just a... It had, a bag of emotions in that game, all different. It was just... That was, I mean, just, I was, that was just in this studio as well. I, I suppose we have to say as well, I mean, you have to feel a little bit for Paris Saint-Germain, for that to happen to them. You don't. I mean... Yeah, well, I mean... <laughs> <laughs> okay, you, Although we didn't look like we did particularly. You do a little bit because, listen, they were sensational in, in the first leg of this game, but it's all about Barcelona now. They mm. absolutely suffocated them. For the first 60 minutes, it was non-stop for the PSG players. They were under a barrage of suffocation. Tactical cages around every single player. They were winning the ball back in the six-yard box, the 18-yard box. It was incredible. They had a little bit of a breather with the goal, with the Cavani goal. But then towards the end, it was on again, pressing right from the front. It was incredible to watch. Around 70, 75 yeah. minutes, you, you felt, felt oh, flat, they've given it? up. Yeah. They've, they've given, given up. up. And I think yeah. everybody felt like that, the players and, and the fans and everyone. But that little spark of life, that Neymar free kick, yeah. and then all of a sudden, yeah. it went again. But you know what, as well, is. It's, Paris Saint-Germain had two chances. They had one-on-ones. Mm. Di Maria and yes, Cavani had two one-on-ones to totally end this game. Yep. And they'll be ruining them, ruining them chances. Yeah, they were. Let's remind ourselves of what happened in, in the second half. We knew it was 2-0 at half-time. Uh, just after half-time, penalty decision, which uh, uh, there was some confusion for a while. Yeah, but it's a stonewall. This, this, this ball from Iniesta is just oh. teasing the fullback. It's just the way he waits. He's just he waits, waits for him. The movement from Neymar and the understanding and then the timing of that all in one. The defender just said, my legs have gone, he's got to go over. <laughs> <laughs> a definite penalty. I don't know what the referee's waiting for. He's in a great position. Well, he's going to check, isn't he, with the um, extra official there. That ball from Iniesta was just... I mean, yeah, very few people can play those type of balls. They, 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 yeah. They're seeing a pitch and not half a second before. I mean, it's like a full second before what it's going to turn out like. Beautiful penalty. Struck sweetly. Yeah, he hit his last one like that, didn't he? He, he arrowed did, yeah. it into the same corner. It's a bit more in the corner, the last one, but at that power they go in, don't they? And then, of course, 3-0, we're thinking if it gets to 4-0, it could go to extra time, anything could happen, and then... I suppose they were always open to a counter-attack. Yeah. And Cavani, lethal again. I think we, we all expected Paris Saint-Germain to score. On the, not, not this way, really, but it was a great run. Bad defending from Rakitic and Cavani <laughs> has been doing this all season with an unbelievable finish. And at this moment, you think the game's over. You think the game's dead and buried. This Barcelona team have put everything into the first, um, first half of the game and then all of a sudden this happens and you think it's game over. Do you think Michael is perhaps one of those instinctive strikers? He seems, when he's got yeah. a lot of time, he, he tends to sometimes miss. But on those occasions, bang. That's right. Well, we sp spoke about him before the game and he's, he's a player, Rio's mentioned a couple of chances, he's, mm. he's had a one-on-one, -on -one. he hit the post in the first half, mm. a lovely dart and run again, and that again was an mm. instinctive run. So he gets chances every game because of his movement, but he does miss a lot of chances. But as you say, that instinctive, when it comes to you, you don't have time to think about it and certain strikers yeah. score a lot of goals that way. Well, we all thought that was it. We all thought that away goal thing had killed another game, but on this occasion, it certainly hadn't. And um, along came Neymar, who was superb throughout, wasn't he? With this, he was he was the best player on the pitch. This guy, I mean, he's the heir to the throne now. When these guys, Ronaldo oh. and Messi, go, that was ridiculous. <laughs> From where it is on the pitch, he's got no right to even take that on. Every other player really is crossing that ball, and where he's put that, there's no chance for any keeper. He could have had two in there. They're not getting that. But, I mean, he, even after this free kick, you're still thinking there's not going to be enough time no. mm. for it to happen. I mean, it was a sensational free kick, yeah. fair play. But then um, another penalty. Uh, let's have a look at the decision first and foremost before we see, well, Neymar stepping forward, the man in form, the man in the moment, despite Messi knocking one in earlier. It's what do we think? It's a great ball over the top. And I think what the defender does is he gives the referee a decision. He's, the the he, contact is minimal. He's clever there, Suarez, isn't he? You know? yeah. <laughs> that's what type of player Suarez is. Yeah. If you give him, show him one little bit of weakness, he's going to pounce. Yeah. 
And um, Neymar instead of Messi yeah, on this occasion, they do swap it around occasionally. Strange, no, they change the penalty takers, but you know both penalties were superb. That one even had even more pressure than, than Messi's on, but he was never going to miss. You know yeah. the confidence he was showing at mm. that point. Yeah, and then well, one of the moments I don't think we'll ever forget. We won't because we've just been embarrassed <laughs> <laughs> on television. But it uh, seemed like yeah. Neymar really took the game. With eight yeah. minutes to go, he's the one who had the nerve yeah. to take this game. Look at hold on, yeah. shots is brilliant, yeah. and then. What a beautiful ball with his left foot what and the, the finish. I mean, you, you, you well, yeah, the finish isn't that. easy at all, is it? And you, you, you question whether it's offside to start with, but we quite clearly saw that it was onside. But most people panic in this situation, don't they? You know, oh, let's just knock it in because it's the safe. Michael, option. I think 99% of players would have played long on the first. Point. That's what not, I mean. Not yeah. cut on your weak mm. foot yeah. and then yeah. play a dink. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, you can't. It's when you say weak, you mean weak hair. Weak hair, <laughs> yeah, yeah, in his situation, weak hair, yeah. but. I think 99% of players just lob that into the box of the first occasion and panic. What and they're doing there is Roy's passing on responsibility as well. Mm -hmm. Neymar took responsibility, took hold of this game with eight minutes to go and said, listen, I'm going to do something special each time I get it to actually I mean, drag us back into Lewis the and scenes. Enrique, so much stick they got after that first game. What a comeback. Look at the emotions. Imagine emotions as well as, he, as, he, as he, memory he, on the other side of the He doesn't quake. look tired to me. No. <laughs> he doesn't look tired to me. No, he looks full of beans, doesn't he? That's Imagine being in the PSG change room now. No. How do you, how do you and look at Emery as well, who's put that tactical thing where they played really deep. That's going to look bad on him now. I mean, it's fine if they'd have gone through with that away goal, but now yeah. you could see the deflation in his face. At the end. He's a tactical genius, isn't he? If, it, yeah. if they go through and they've played defensively, everyone says he's a tactical genius. Now they've, they've played defensively, they've put every man behind the, the, the ball, as we yeah. highlighted in the first half. And they've still gone out, so now people are going to question, saying, well, it worked so, so well in the first leg, why didn't you do it again? Uh, the only mistake I would say for me, with, with hindsight, which is a great thing, is that the way they played in the first game, pressing high, it worked so well, why go away from that? Do that there, you need a goal, a goal will kill the game, and then I, I think, think it's easier to then go back into a block and be defensive. But it's, but it's tough, Rio, you know, you've played the new Camp, T to go and press at the new Camp is... We defended. Is, 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 <laughs> I, we've done, I've done that yeah, I've on done two or three occasions yeah. in the team block, but... How I felt they went wrong over the, the 90 minutes is they never played long once. No, no. they kept they were, trying they to play out and they kept catching They were them, trying to play in little triangles yeah. and it, it invited the press on and yeah. Barcelona suffocated. Mm. But it is harder to actually go from a team that's in a block and say, oh, we're going to be expansive again later They're not on the used game. to playing in the block. Yeah. Are so they I over think it's, if you're on the front foot, it's easy to say, oh, we get our goal then, or we almost get a goal, we're playing well, go back into a block. It's easier to, to shift that way than yeah. the other way for me. Yeah. yeah. I think a lot of the time as well, as, as Steve just touched on, when you're playing in France and when you're the, you, you, you virtually beat everybody every single week, yeah. there's no need to ever change your tactics. There's no mm. need to sit back. And you know, in the Premier League, every team goes away from home and they're the underdogs against a big team. So you have a little change and, and similar Barcelona probably, don't they have one way of playing? But you know, it's whether they would have understood how to play when they're so used week in, week out playing an attacking team in, in, the, uh, in the French League. But we can say the best team in the world and we want to keep going on our dream in the Champions League. Well, for every happy ending in team sport, there's a, there's a sad one for the other side and that was certainly the case tonight for PSG. Um, but in, in, in many ways, they got themselves to blame. They had their chances, didn't they, in the second half when it was to put it out of reach of Barcelona. Yeah, and, we, and Michael mentioned before Cavani, but he's a, he's a great striker, but the, the, the easier chances, this, is a, this isn't easy, this is a great run, this is more instinctive. Yeah. Uh, this is a difficult finish, yeah. but the, the, the chance you see in a minute coming up that he has, when he's got time to think, you'd like to think that he, he put that ball away and, and finished the game off, but here he goes here. Do you prefer them, Michael? That's just a dream for a right yeah. footer, because I all you have those. to do is sit, set yeah. it out, don't you, onto the yeah. post and it curls in, and almost, you need to lift it as well from that angle, just a tiny little lift, Bendy. because the goalkeeper... This pass, this is Di Maria. Yeah, this was on a couple of occasions when PSG did actually break Barca's press and that's a magnificent chance. He's got to try and get that off a little yeah. bit quicker. He's gone for that old dink. He's, he's quite good at that dink, isn't he? That he's, yeah. He looked like he was going for it. It just didn't happen for him. Yeah. I mean, this could have a devastating effect on PSG, couldn't it? I mean, not, just like subconsciously or mentally in all sorts of different ways. It's a devastating defeat. It's a devastating defeat. You know, three weeks ago, they put in one of the best European performances you've ever seen against yeah. the top Barcelona team. They made them look bang average, but... 
Tonight they've got the tactics wrong. Yeah, they've come very close and they've missed big chances, but they'll be going home on that flight tonight. Absolutely devastating. Yeah. The other thing is they normally won the league by now in France, haven't they? They're, uh, they're yeah, second. Start, start they're Monaco, behind yeah. Monaco, so it, all of a sudden, mm. everything going so rosy, it mm. could be a disastrous season but, for them. But as far as Barcelona is concerned, it just adds to the legend of this team, doesn't it? Yeah, and that's just another chapter of just of huge brilliance. And, and the way that this team just kind of... they. They looked at each other. You could see the confidence. They spoke about before that we can. We can achieve this. We can get over this line. Uh, no matter what the result was beforehand, and they've produced it. Nothing is impossible. I think we should um, come back to tonight's game, though, because it, it was an epic game. It is a game that we'll talk about for a long time to come. And um, it really was extraordinary. And we, whilst we sort of trying to build things up and say it might happen, we never really thought it would. No, well, we thought part of it had happened. We thought they had the potential to score that many goals, but, you know, to score six. six. <laughs> it was, and it was the way it happened, all, yeah. you know, that late flurry of goals as well. And even during the game, we were talking, they scored at great times early on to put, the, you know, to put them on the back foot. And then just before half-time, it's always a nightmare time to score. And then again early on in the second, but then the, the sucker punch to, to obviously you know, concede one. And then the, the grandstand finish was just out of this world. It's, one of, it's a moment in a lifetime. Sergio Roberto, um, remember that name, that will be the answer to a quiz question for many years to come, I imagine. <laughs> you know what? I, I don't think I've sweated when I've played as much as I have now. No, I was but sweating at that moment. sweat on ever. I've got to have a shower after. Michael yeah. especially, because he was running around the studio. I, I, think, I think everyone outside the Paris would have been exactly the same. In your house tonight, yeah. if you weren't off the couch, you don't love football, you don't love the Champions League. That's the reason why the Champions League is the yeah. biggest competition in football. Yeah, yeah it is. I mean, what's the best night of your life in football? Mine's the Champions League yeah. comebacks in the Champions League cannot be. Oh, thanks. <laughs> Me and Gary are sitting there slumping in that chair. We're just looking at each other there going. But it is, though. Oh. It is, it's, it's like, oh, right. It's the, oh, right, you, right. You look and think, wow, this. And you can see today the emotions in that stadium. I won the old That's second why. division. That was all right. Oh, well done. <laughs> But um, no, it is. I mean, I, I mean that togetherness that they now get from that as well. Don't they? The difference between five-one and going out and six-one and going through—it's it, immeasurable. Yeah, you almost, you almost think that if if they're playing anybody now, then how how never can they beaten. get beat? How, never beaten either. They can't get. No, yeah. they can't but, get beat. But we, as we all know, every game is different. And they, that's the yeah. that's the beauty of football. But I think the wake-up call for for, for Barca's is three weeks ago. The difference in the performance yeah. three weeks ago. What did you put that down to? They just seemed like they were. He showed asleep. no passion, no commitments. They yeah. they didn't turn up. But tonight they yeah. were absolutely phenomenal. It's, it's funny how sometimes though, you can have that whole lethargic mood if all the players get it, and you, it's hard to lift it, isn't it? And I think when you're that good. You sometimes it, it can be look worse. Don't yeah, yeah, it looks worse. But you think, don't worry, we've still got to play them at home. And even if they'd scored another one of three, four, five, or whatever, they'd still probably fancy themselves because they're that good. So there's always that at the back of the mind as well. Mm. Mm. And there's um, well, we see obviously um, a little picture of them in the dressing room, and as you can imagine, they're uh, quite happy, Rio. <laughs> yeah, I mean, uh, this this result. I'm, I'm not a fan of selfies in change rooms when there's not a title to be won, but that, this deserves it. This game deserved that. But I'll tell you, one team that will be looking at this with a bit of concern will be the Real Madrid team. Well, Ramos um, said as much in an interview, didn't he? He said, oh, I hope Barca don't get through. Yeah, and I bet he did, but they'll <laughs> yeah. be looking at this result and thinking, wow, we are now yeah. in for a run-in. OK, well, I've, I've quite enjoyed this evening, uh, gentlemen, <laughs> Michael, Stephen, <laughs> Rio. Thanks very much uh, for your company.